This is introductory video to power supplies. So first of all, what are power supplies and especially what power supplies are we talking about in analog circuits? So to start with, let me take a simple analog circuit. Let's say it's a common source amplifier. But our intention is not to understand the amplifier here. The first thing when we think about is the power supply that we give, which is DC power supply. So this we call the DC power supply. So any circuit we talk about which needs a DC power supply. So all electronic circuits need DC supply. But the supply sockets at home, especially in India, come with 220 volt RMS at 50 hertz. We call that the line supply or the main supply. Now, the intention is given that we have AC supply, which is alternating, that's why it has a frequency here. This is alternating current, but we need here a direct current. So given that AC supply, we need a DC supply, which means we need circuitry in the between, which would do the conversion. So we call this a converter, which will convert AC to DC, where we need this DC supply to power all the circuits that we have. In fact, the converters that we are talking about here, AC to DC, are of two types. One is linear power supply and the other one is switch mode power supply. In fact, in our course, we are interested in going in detail into linear power supply. But just to have completeness, let's see if we have DC supply the circuitry that will convert the DC supply to AC supply is called as inverter which is especially used in the uninterrupted power supplies or standby power supplies and in fact this is the technology that DC to AC conversion is used in electric cars but of course that's not the point of interest for us in this course it's only about AC to DC conversion and that too especially the linear power supply to give you a brief idea on where do you find these linear power supplies and switch mode power supplies. Switch mode power supplies are present in chargers given for laptops, tablets or mobiles, which are usually called as adapters or chargers, which in this case we are calling it as power supplies because that's the one which actually supplies the DC for the batteries to be charged or powering the devices. Coming to the linear power supply, when you go to electronics lab, you'd find this big heavy one where you would plug to the wall and you would get a DC supply to power your circuit board or breadboard. You would use that supply, which is linear power supply. To understand linear power supply, let me start with the power supply that we have is the line supply or the main supply which is the 220 volt rms at 50 hertz in fact if you look at the volts that we have to use for powering the analog or digital circuitry is in few volts or few tens of volts but not this high as 220 volts hence the first thing that we want to do is step down this voltage so for that we take this line voltage or line supply take it through a step down transformer so that the very high voltage that we get out of the wall socket is stepped down so that it becomes a small voltage but if you pay attention here that the positive wave when we take the area which would be positive and for the negative one it is negative 
If you take the overall area in the given period, let's say, the overall area would be zero, which means the average value would be zero, which means that the DC component in the line supply would be zero. That's why it is called AC. Hence, of course, we wouldn't be having an average value. So the same thing when we step it down, obviously the positive side of the wave, the area and the negative side of the wave area would be equal and opposite. Hence, the average value, even in this case, would be zero, which means the DC component would be zero, which means we don't have any DC component. But we are trying here to convert AC to DC, which means we need to get the DC or average component to be higher. So looking at this waveform, we say that we have positive and negative. So in order to have positive average value, either we have to rectify or remove the negative side of it, which means it would become either a signal like this. In the positive half cycle, it is present and the negative half cycle is rectified or removed so that we have a signal like this. So in fact, the average value in this case would not be zero. It will be a finite value. So even better thing to have here is take this input and rectify the negative one and make it positive so that we will have both positive so that the average value or the area in this period would be higher compared to the first one. So in this case also average value will not be zero and of course average value of two will be higher compared to average value of one. So this kind of rectification process can be done by using a rectifier after the step down transformer. So let me represent that here. Rectifier circuit. In general, it will be a bridge rectifier if it is going to be the second case. And most of the cases, it will be a bridge rectifier because obviously the average value to start with would be higher in the second case. So at line voltage, we have this graph. And after the step down, we have this graph. And at the output of the rectifier, we would have this graph considering bridge rectifier. And of course, we'll go into detail and understand bridge rectifier as we go forward in the coming videos. So obviously, in this case, we have, let's say, a current, which is represented by this, uh, the second case. This current would be having a DC component, as we talked about, that the area is positive. And of course, it is divided by the uh, time or the angle that we have here. We would get the average current plus it will have a alternating component as well, which means this we would say I dash is called the AC component. So the I that is at the output of the rectifier would have a DC component as well as a AC component. Obviously, when we have these components, we can filter the AC components out if you put a filter at the output of the rectifier. So hence, we can go forward and put the block here indicating that we need a filter circuit here to filter out the AC component. So let's say at the output of the filter that we are going to filter out the AC components and we would have at the filter output a DC component on top of which there will be some variations however good a filter is you would still be having some variations. And if you account for the line voltage that we have here, the line voltage as we are talking about 220 volts RMS, which wouldn't stay the same because there would be fluctuations in the input supply due to which there would be variations that would come all the way at the output of the filter, which means the line supply would have fluctuations Science, we would say there would be fluctuations in input supply. When we have fluctuations in the input supply, and yet we want to get a DC supply at the output, we need to add a circuitry called regulator, which would look at the variations at the input, and yet it would regulate 
the output voltage so that it would be a DC output voltage. And of course, this DC output will be given to a particular load because we would be connecting the DC output coming from the regulator to a load. Obviously, the load will be varying depending on the operation. Hence, there would be variations even in the load. So let me represent that. There would be variation in load. So which means the regulator, irrespective of the fluctuations in the input supply or the variations in the load, it should be able to supply a constant DC output to the load. So let me represent the DC component. So this would be the DC component coming out of it. So there would be a constant voltage coming out, which we would call a DC output. So this would be the waveform here and the final output here. In fact, as we move forward in the next videos, we would be talking about first starting with rectifiers. And of course, rectifiers and uh, transformers are integral parts. So we will deal them together. So the first thing we would do is take these two together and talk about rectifiers. And of course, when we do the rectification in the first case, as is shown here, that is called half wave rectifier. And when we get to the second case, this is called full wave rectifier. We will discuss them in detail with a lot of parameters and derivations. And then we will move on to filters and then we will see the regulators and how it will be able to regulate the variations in the input supply versus the variations in the load. If you like the video, please press the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Thanks for watching.